Up. I'm Dr. Gloria Lattimore, Peace host and producer of Omni U Presents the H3O Art of Life show. And the title of this show is Community Empowerment? Question mark, by any means, period. And I have with me guests who can discuss everything I want to hear about so I don't have to say much, and I'm real happy to introduce them so they can get started and I can listen. I have Valerie Leonard, who is co-founder of the North Lawndale Alliance. I have Professor Robert Starks, who is, claims to be retired, but you could hardly tell. You got it. The you Task it. Force for Black Political Empowerment. Mm -hmm. And then I have a write-in candidate for the second congressional district, Marcus Lewis, mm -hmm. which, mm -hmm. who is the reason why I title this show by any means, because Marcus is quick to point out that people think that a write-in candidate's chances are slim, and so I'm going to let him start out by telling us why he is running. First of all, I guess we need to know something about the 2nd Congressional District, and then why you are running for office there as a write-in candidate. Well, thank you for having me, uh, Ms. Peace. The second congressional district borders are from 53rd and Cornell over to the lake, down into Roseland, into the south suburbs, and it attaches to Will and Kankakee County. So the length is narrow and long. Uh, it is mainly rural, a mixture of, of urban, and it has uh, uh, former uh, manufacturing base that is now uh, left the district. Uh, I am running simply because after 32 plus years of absolute corruption, deceit, and lies, and the, the district is basically a wasteland. All the companies have left. We're basically left with basically um, oversized bed and breakfasts out in the south suburbs, where it's majority black. And in the city, we have a gang violence problem that is absolutely an epidem epidemic. The attached um, New counties of Will and Kankakee that have been attached because of the redistricting uh, in 2011 are mainly farmland. And then we have a situation in Kankakee where we have a black, black area called Pembroke in Hopkins Park that is absolutely drinking poison water. It is so dire, they are the third worst in cancer clusters in the nation. And it's gotten to the place where the Republican congressman that was over that, that's now under Democrat, um, it's absolutely done nothing for them. And the district has no jobs. Education is poor. A third of the schools that Mayor Manuel had, had closed are in the second congressional district. No word from the current office holder. And so I have stepped up because a write-in under the age of technology is very plausible because everybody usually has a smartphone of some sort. I have an app called Vote for Marcus because we have to be savvy to download from the Google Play Store or the Apple uh, App Store. And once downloaded, we can push notifications, have full information of my agenda, of the plans I have for the district in the first two years. They are sustainable, and they are something that people will want to reach out for. And with this app, it empowers you to know when it's time to vote, where to go vote, and we can win this simply because we're dealing with intelligent people now, and enormous for people that have been satisfied with or become accustomed with things that are uh, distasteful or substandard. That's the way they've been voting, because they haven't been given a real choice. The issue of whether you're a Democrat or Republican is now must fall to the wayside, because if your child needs to go to the hospital, we're not going to do home health care when the child has gangrene. And our district has gangrene from the top down. And I'm talking to the people. I'm chasing voters who basically said, I've had enough. 
that they need an option out of this. I consider myself, Ms. Peace, a crab that came out of the barrel. And I have seen what's available for those that have now left behind. And I have turned around and through a plan of being a citizen legislator, the job does not encompass only 735 days. I'm going back to rescue and save this district because the seat must be in our control, not in the control of the top 1% as it is now. Because we saw a special election where the outside forces paid $2 million in advertising and blanketed, giving people the psychology that once you see an ad six times, that's the person you're going to vote for. That's how the voters were manipulated. Manipulated. And we don't want that anymore. Because after the election, it's back to status quo, business as usual. But can I win? Absolutely I can win. If you text and type, you can write my name in. We have a jingle. M-A-R-C-U-S-L-E-W-I-S for Congress. And you touch that. That is a catchy jingle. That's going to stick with you. The other strategy that we're using, because we have to win the election as well. You'll love my plans and programs. We are handing out by the thousands these yellow armbands that state, Marcus Lewis, write it in for U.S. Rep. 2nd District. As a reminder to let them know that there is a real campaign going on, and I am fighting for you and your family, because without the seat of power, we have no power. The people in it don't listen to us. How do I know? Just go back 32 years. We had an incumbent that's now in prison for 17. We had another gentleman who went to prison for 22 months. Then we had another gentleman who was in the seat for 12 years. These were machine candidates. And it's those candidates that did the work for those that put them there. And the voters were inured lulled into a sleep to vote for them because of this DR thing. But the D and the R are both holding hands outside the, the glowing of the, the Klieg lights. And people like myself, yourself, the people on this panel, we are average citizens that deserve better for our families. And I'm here to give it to them. Finally, we have access and an option that we never had before. And what I've done is just put all these factors together these elements that can be winning, but of course I'm going to vote for myself. I need the general public to participate. And that's where the general public comes in. Download my app. Go to my website. It's one of the best websites going. And I had people that are determined, they see the, the way out because the last election was, was, was criminal. I was in that election. I received 40,000 votes. These people determined and said, I can't vote for that. And they were on the right side of history because the incumbent at that time, the next day, plea bargained or had done so months before. That was very deceitful. And 15 days later, resigned. Cost us $5.2 million for a special election. That was a waste. Now we have a person who's now in the office who hired his chief of staff as her senior advisor. So that's how you keep the status quo business as usual. We're going to break that. Corruption, deceit, and lies are going to stop at the water's edge the moment that I'm elected, congressman-elect, because I want to bring forth the WPA program and reintroduce that. That was a depressionary program that hired 8 million people and put them to work based on what they could do, not based on need. That's why we have the museums. Artisans, our high schools are filled with WPA projects, and it we need people to earn a check because people simply have run out of money. Not all, but the majority are tapped out. And if you have no money in an area or a district, there is no economy. And that's why these businesses don't want to come here because the people generally don't have money. The, the, the citizenry needs their federal government to be active, and that's what I want to play is an active role because without the federal government at the aid, almost like a crutch at this point, the people have nowhere else to go. And I want to reinvigorate what the federal government can do. Because if we don't try something, 
we're going to fail. And so my job is, and my mentality is, we're going to try something. We have plenty of plans. I have gun for jobs. We want people to put down their, their, their guns and bring forth butter. We want companies to come in here and reinvigorate. We have plenty of um, people that have startups, would love to have startups, that are just looking for resources. I want to bring Tesla, the electric car company, into this district. Elon Musk is looking for, he's the CEO of, of um, Tesla and can SpaceX. We get, can we get back to more of what it is you want to do for the electorate? Yes, All I right. want to show them there's a way. Well, I need to go to Bob Stark mm -hmm. right now. I want to apologize to you, Valerie, because I know it's usually ladies first. But, you know, <laughs> the protocol here is I'm the host, you're the guest, <laughs> and I'm the decider. <laughs> All right, Ronald that Reagan. So, that was so disappointing. <laughs> George Bush. <laughs> But I do apologize to you, okay. Valerie. But I'm trying to put, I'm trying to lay a framework around where I want you to come in, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm not coming to you first. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, <laughs> Professor Robert T. Starks, who has been in this thing called politics, particularly political empowerment, which is not just politics. This is, mm -hmm. you know. Many people will say, well, why should I vote? What am I voting for? Mm -hmm. I voted for this one, and they made a lot of promises, and they didn't do what they promised. And I voted for the other one, and other people will say, I didn't vote. I didn't see what difference it would make. You know, you got so-and-so in there, and, you know, the district or whatever, the unit is worse off. Mm -hmm. I say community empowerment by any means. So you try every means, it, Absolutely. whether or not it, it has ever worked, whether or not it has worked to your satisfaction, you try every means. So you have been about black political empowerment mm -hmm. for many, many years, had the task force, mm -hmm. played a major role in the election of our favorite mayor, and so I want you to talk about something about how this thing works for and against us mm -hmm. in terms of electoral politics. Well, first of all, let's define politics. Um, Very good. Which is one of the things that, that always irritates me because most people don't define it correctly. Politics is simply a process. It's not an end in itself. And I'm glad that... Uh, Mr. Lewis talked about it in that way. Uh, politics, as defined by a classic um, political scientist, is the, uh, w the process whereby a society, regardless of what kind of society it is, decides who gets what, when, and how. And, th and therefore, the, the politics is a process, not an end, right? The end is power empowerment and power. And what do we mean by power? We mean the ability to determine your own fate within your community. And it's community empowerment and not individual empowerment. So I'm glad again that Mr. Mr. Lewis talks about that. So that African Americans, unfortunately, we're victims of people who see themselves as being empowered and not the community. And therefore it's me, 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 me. And uh, given the, the, the way in which democratic politics operates in Chicago, you, uh, in order to get elected and stay elected, many people believe they have to be attached to the democratic uh, machine in, in Illinois and Chicago. And therefore, when they go downstate, they are tied at the hip to uh, the, the Speaker of the House, Mr. Madigan. When they go to Washington, as a congressman, they are tied to the hip of uh, uh, Mrs. Pelosi, who's the Speaker of the, the Congress, the House of, in, in, in Washington. So they don't see themselves as being independent. One of the reasons is it costs a lot of money to run for office. And the speakers in both the State House and in the Congress controls the money. 
And I tell you very clearly, if you don't play ball with us, you won't get elected. So that's, those are some of the encumbrances. But people have to understand that in order to have the freedom and the power that we want, we've got to break out that out of that, that box. Yes. We've got to break out of that box. But I, I just want to make one point to Mr. Lewis. Uh, the gentleman who served before Mel Reynolds was a dear friend of mine, Gus Savage. Mm -hmm. Gus was elected by the Democratic uh, Party. He was a Democrat. But he was one of the most progressive men we've ever had in the Congress, period. Now, uh, I mean, we could just go down the list. Gloria knew uh, Gus rather well, and uh, we can just count on a number of things that, that he did that benefited the community. As, and of course, he benefited himself, but he, he definitely was a community and a very progressive man. So uh, I, I'm just happy that, that Lewis is running, but let me just warn you, uh, Mr. Lewis, when in that special election, uh, we had several forums, and I talked about the fact that over the next 20 years, in your district, the second congressional district, it has been estimated that something between 50 billion and 100 billion dollars will be spent on development in that district. Because what you're talking about, the Illinois, uh, Indiana, Illiana, yeah. mm -hmm. right? You're talking about the airport, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about building a city within the city from 87th Street along the lakefront all the way through the steel mill, the former steel mill area, right? You're talking about if the airport comes in, that whole area is going to be redeveloped. That's the big question. I don't believe it's going to happen. Why don't you think it will happen? Because, first of all, it needs federal funding, and it does not have that. Okay. The Republicans okay. in Congress are not going to give it. Ileana has been dubbed the highway to nowhere. Of course. Okay. And there's It's still not the first time we've ever had <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. But what, it's what a money the, thing. What the governor has done mm -hmm. is order last November or September, I believe, that the uh, land, 600 acres that they need to, mm -hmm. for the airport to be purchased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that can't be changed of mind. That mind can be changed. Now the state owns the land. And when you have state owning the land, now that land's been taken off tax rolls. All right, well, let me just inform you who owned the land. Just think about it. Remember when it was first announced some, what, 10, 15 years ago? Politicians sitting in the state house and in City Hall went and bought the land. I understand that. And now they've turned around and sold it to the state and made a big profit. profit. <laughs> but I, I'm one, uh, because of our subject matter, mm -hmm. I'm one that wants to see an industrial park. Okay, that would That's be That's what I want to see that would be in great. the Moni Piatone area. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I worked for an airline, and mm -hmm. you go and asphalt and concrete six, seven, ten square areas. Mm -hmm. uh, you have now an area that now can't be used for anything else. Mm -hmm. Not one airline has said they're going to sign on to mm -hmm. the ALNAC. Uh, airline, I mean mm -hmm. air, airport. Mm -hmm. You have Gary International Airport, 15 mm -hmm. minutes away, mm -hmm. where the mayor, I forgot her name was Karen, I forgot her last name, mm -hmm. uh, forgive me, but she is now extending the runways. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. understand that there may be some issues with the, the e ecosystem, mm -hmm. ecosystem out, but they're going to yeah. fix mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And they're extending it to take in the 787 uh, airlines. Now they only had one airline, airline going there, and that was mm -hmm. uh, Allegheny mm -hmm. on Thursday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Now that is closed. Now yeah. they have none. None. What's so right? now we have uh, a mentality here: build it, and then they will come. Mm -hmm. Mayor Emanuel told Congressman Jackson at his dinner table back in April of 2012 that I'm going to build two runways at O'Hare, and I am not going to support a South um, mm -hmm. uh, Suburban Airport. Well, we must explain to the audience that, in fact, the Gary Airport is called the Gary Chicago Airport. Correct. Combined. <laughs> it's, it's combined yes. with, with the Chicago Airport system. So you're right. So if, if the mayor does not support it, uh, uh, the, uh, it, can't, it can't operate. And if he decides to put money into Gary as opposed to the, uh, the, the proposed airport in Piatone, 
it just uh, it knocks out the whole Remember, thing. It, it does get $3 million in subsidies from mm -hmm. the city mm -hmm. every year. Every year. And exactly. it is a, a model of, because it's only 20 minutes away from mm -hmm. downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it would be in our best interest to have an agreement with the uh, Indiana mm -hmm. and the district that mm -hmm. we will help uh, have some unemployment mm -hmm. and our businesses will be able to get contracts to be able to address uh, the needs uh, of that airport. So we have a shared. But to build an outright unnecessary um, airport that has no airlines contracted to go there, United, American, the rest of them, Northwest, they're not going there. And so they said, we're going to turn into a cargo airport. That's exactly what they, it was now they originally issued, intended to be. But see, Will County wanted to have an economic engine. Mm -hmm. And this was their idea to do that. Mm -hmm. It just that it takes almost a decade or so just to get it up and running before they even put a shovel in the ground. We need jobs now. That's where the WPA really comes into play. Because we can have people working right here and now. We go put people that are former plumbers, artisans, uh, mathematicians, teachers, reopen these schools that they want to close, that they want to give to people for a dollar. That is insulting. That's defunding our, our community. We can't have empty buildings sitting around and then to turn it over to give it to uh, private industry, which is called the charter. I am for public education. Private industry, they can do that. But as far as this congressman, I want to ensure that we get the resources to go directly to where it's supposed to go, and that's to the people. Mm -hmm. I am only going to take my salary. See, I am cut from a different cloth. I have seen enough corruption. I have seen enough backroom dealing that would serve me a lifetime. The people actually have to have resources, money, and jobs. Mm -hmm. That's what the president told the people in uh, Appalachia, in Pennsylvania, South Carolina. I promise you m jobs, money, and resources to get those votes. Now you know I promise to fight for women's rights. <laughs> and I promise to fight for them as well. <laughs> and I've got a woman sitting here, <laughs> and we're both sitting here. We're, we're awestruck because you all know so much about what you're talking about yes, until I almost forgot I was hosting a show. Oh, yeah. So yeah. let me come back to life here. All right. Now, Bob, you set it up for me in, mm -hmm. the, in the way that I knew you would. Mm -hmm. Who gets what? When and how. That's what Bob this is that. where Valerie <laughs> Leonard comes in in the North Lawndale Alliance mm -hmm. because that's exactly what they've been working on <laughs> mm -hmm. is getting what, the who being North Lawndale mm -hmm. and the what being TIF funds mm -hmm. so that things can be done in North Lawndale that are not currently being addressed. Go ahead, Valerie, and talk about that journey. Okay. Um, yeah, let me just clarify. The Lawndale Alliance does advocacy, so we don't necessarily control any, f any funding, per se. We do advocate for where we believe funds should go. Um, the way we got started, um, 2007, we had the last TIF in North Lawndale created. In fact, North Lawndale is impacted by eight TIFs. We just got another TIF that just has a mm. sports field in in Douglas Park, but at any rate, every inch of land in North Lawndale is in a TIF. And we were very concerned because they were looking at putting a hundred million dollars into a fund and they didn't have any input from the general public. You know, there was input from nonprofits and mm. a couple foundations, but very little, if any, you know, from the general public. When they had the public meetings, we were very dismayed because of that hundred million dollars, they were going to put like two and a half million dollars into workforce development, and the vast majority of that money was going to go into you know uh, money for retraining ex-offenders, and we don't have a problem with that. But what about people who are actually paying the property taxes? You know, what if they've been in mature manufacturing industries, which was really, you know, if you look at the, where the employment in, in North Lawndale is, you know, most of the folks are either in nonprofits, education, or the mature smokestack type industries. And there was no, there was nothing in there to retool them to, you know, 
get prepared for the new manufacturing. We were also concerned that there's more money going into child care than for job development. And then when you looked at where the development dollars were going, they were going for nonprofit to uh, redevelop and nothing for you know mom and pop developers from the community. When we looked at where the contracts were going, um, by and large they were for investment bankers, they were for contractors who weren't from the community. And when we spoke with the city, you know, um, is there, you know, asking them, is there some way we can, you know, determine whether or not anybody from North Lawndale got any jobs? They couldn't produce anything. They couldn't even give us a report by zip code as to who got what job. So, needless to say, we were very, very um, disappointed with that process. But as a result of that advocacy, I understand that there are much more diligent, you know, they were scrambling and asking people who got the money, how many jobs, how many jobs did you create? So they're trying to track those, you know, more closely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we had the same issue with some money from HUD. You know, there was um, money from HUD, three rounds of money for the new, um, for the NSP program, that's Neighborhood Stabilization Program. Um, under daily, the city um, went and applied for HUD funding to help jumpstart communities that were, you know, devastated by a mortgage foreclosure. North Lawndale was one of them, you know, so we were in the top two or three neighborhoods in terms of mortgage foreclosure. They used our demographics to get mm -hmm. this money, all three rounds, mind mm -hmm. you. And when it came time to actually give the money out to the communities, they only gave us enough to do six developments. And when I say developments, I'm talking about mm -hmm two or three flats mm -hmm. in North Lawndale to, to rehab those. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was a big slap in the face. So through our advocacy, we forced them to do a public hearing. And when I say them, City Hall, to do a public hearing to give an accounting for that money to see exactly where it went. And then to add insult to injury, you know, under the Emanuel administration, he basically decided, you know, we're just going to put that kind of money in neighborhoods that you know, are gonna that have the biggest chance of recovery. And you know, look, Lawndale has been trying to recover for over 50 years, and it stands to reason that if we were going to recover on our own, we would have done it. You know, so under Daly, we've not gotten our fair share, and under Emmanuel, it's even worse. You know, he's definitely set us up to die on the vine. He's not even trying to create programs that'll jumpstart our community. Now, Gloria, you lived just west of uh, Lawndale uh, when you were in college, right? I lived. And I lived in I Lawndale. I talked to her and found out every address I gave her was in Lawndale. <laughs> right, right. So we remember <laughs> yes. what Lawndale used to look like, mm -hmm. and we look at it now. And, and I'm glad you pointed out the fact that Lawndale, as a community, was in the top five nationally in terms of, of uh, foreclosures. And that's mm -hmm. terrible. That is absolutely terrible. We need to talk about TIFs. I, you need I, to, we need to define <laughs> TIFs because right. we just but, acting like define, everybody but, knows But also I want to ask her, why is it, and I've seen you on television, I've read your stuff, why is it so hard to, to get people to understand that TIF is my money yes. from my tax pocket? Yes, it is. <laughs> Why is it, why why is so, it so difficult? Because people in power treat us T as I F stands for tax, tax increment tax financing. financing. Mm -hmm. Okay. They take your tax money, put it in a pot for a particular purpose, and then mm -hmm. give it back to businessmen. Who's supposed to be the right <laughs> it's, That's a transfer of wealth, right? <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's, it's yes. a trickle-down economy. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. right. Okay. In fact, it's worse than that because they cut it off to where they use your money, but you never get access to it. Right. The mm -hmm. problem of it is that, as Dr. Starks admirably said, that the political in this town is one that is stifles, stymies, and right. as she said, not with on the vine, she said, kills it on the vine. <laughs> the people then go from generation to generation having nothing to show for their labor. Mm -hmm. There been, that's why I didn't want to besmirch um, um, the character of, of um, Congressman Savage. Mm -hmm. He really was a man, I liked him oh, I personally. Him. Absolutely. The problem of it is he was a, he was a Democratic machine candidate. Yeah, that's true. That is <laughs> issue, so he was controlled. <laughs> we must control our own destiny. Right. That's the reason for my candidacy, right. to have mm -hmm. self-determination. Mm 
-hmm. there is, it is obscene that she should end up receiving enough money for six, two flats. That's right. That's right. insane. That's, obscene. that's, that's ungodly. Right. Mm -hmm. If you have a congressperson who is not beholden to them, how can I not be beholden to them? He has accurately said that they cut off our money. Right. But I'm chasing the voters. You see, we have to start from our own foundation and build our own foundation. See, I am a crab that got out of the barrel. Mm -hmm. And so whatever he had said, it doesn't mm -hmm. adhere to me. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. In fact, I'll say it does not compute. <laughs> because I understand that if the voters come to their senses after seeing the history, recent history of what we're going through, then a billionaire comes in and f uh, funnels uh, two million dollars in advertising to manipulate you for a person that cares nothing for you. No, she doesn't care anything for you. She, 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 she her, her advocacy is, is her own personal. I care about you and you mm -hmm. and you, mm -hmm. that you actually receive the largest of your labor. It's our tax dollars. You just need a representative who will not sell out. Mm -hmm. I do not understand everything, but one thing I do know as a person at 55 years old, I understand that I've watched people literally dying in the streets, homeless, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people that have um, skills that should not be allowed to rust. Mm -hmm. They need to be put to work. They need resources. We want the same resources that are being given to the top 1% or given to the so-called machine um, uh, influx, and then they mm -hmm. will know where to put it. They're not putting it with us. Mm -hmm. And so we must come to ourselves out of inurement, stop eating second hand, taking third hand, and getting nothing in the hand. We need to put our uh, issues and support behind my candidacy. I would be an independent lobbyist, will have a sign off side my, my, um, my door. Lobbyists need not apply. <laughs> Unless <laughs> you're gonna help our community. <laughs> Don't bring me the money because they'll be saying, he won't take it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm not going to prison. Mm -hmm. The salary that is provided is more than enough. My two year plan to bring forth private industry such as uh, uh, Tesla, who mm -hmm. Elon Musk is looking to put a battery plant mm -hmm. for his electric car. It's a wonderful electric car. And uh, 6,500 jobs are at stake. No one is vying for it. When I get the seat, that's why you have to have the seat. Mm -hmm. You have to have control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't care what an outsider mm -hmm. says. I am an outsider. <laughs> so I am not adhering to what they say. When we get the seat, now they have to come and deal with me honestly because they can't buy me out. They can't sell me out. I have nothing in my past that no besmirchment. I've never been to prison. I have no scandal. And so I just see this as a, a opportunity of a lifetime. Let's take it. Mm -hmm. Because I would be adhering to you and to you and to you and to your concerns mm -hmm. that we you would know, build up Lawndale. Let me tell you, you hit a nerve <laughs> when you said the people in Pembroke mm -hmm. are oh, drinking God, poison yeah. water yes, because mm -hmm. you are the first candidate that I have heard say anything about an environmental issue. I actually called because you see these ads mm -hmm. and you hear people talking about, you know, this one's a crook and that one's a <laughs> fraud and, you know, the, the mudslinging and everything. And you're looking for the platform. What is it these people claim that they will do for the community? You don't hear anybody saying anything about environmental issues. If we are not here, we don't have to worry about whether there will be a third airport or what. We don't have to be concerned about mm -hmm. TIF funds. If we don't survive, see, so for me, the environmental piece is the litmus test for me. If I don't hear that, Candidates got to bring that to me. I'm not going to ask. And what is your stand on any environment? I want to hear something that comes from you, that you are noticing that people are dying yes. as a result of neglect, 
profit taken, yes. corruption, yes. Mm -hmm. and all of these other things, you know, fracking and all of these mm -hmm. other things that are contaminating mm -hmm. the planet where we need to live. Absolutely. Well, so talk to me about this because I have <coughs> friends in Pembroke. In yeah, Hopkins Park, is. I did, yeah. if I may. Yeah, go I went right. to Hopkins Park. Right. By That's Pembroke invitation. Hopkins right. Park. That's right. 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 By invitation of the editor that endorsed me, uh, Mr. James Taylor of the City News. He took me to um, the only place where they have to work, and that's uh, a daycare center. Uh, it's called Melissa's Daycare. And the elementary school down the street. They had, <coughs> speaking about they, the political structure there had built through funding uh, a $4 million cannery plant. And down the street, or down the road is the water treatment plant. Now, both are shuttered because the cannery has um, asbestos. Uh -huh. and so from the, it was a project from the Uni U.S. Commerce Department. You'll see that on my website. Down the road is their water treatment plant. It is so dire that because it is closed, they're not, um, they're not treating the water to return fresh water back to the community because they drink well water. The plant has the sewage coming right out of the plant, oh. it's padlocked, and there's farmlands all around it. And I asked, because you see this, this rainbow glow on the water mm -hmm. oh. going into the creek, I said, oh, it look like, like oil, like, the oil. <laughs> <laughs> like oil's in it. And I asked them, I said, where's that, it's going into a farmland, I said, that's corn, where is that going? Ew. He said, it's, it goes to feed hogs and cows, it's f you know, the grain, it's sold. And he said, it ends up on your dinner table. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That's okay. how dire this thing is. Mm -hmm. And I said, you mean to tell me that the ribeyes, the meatloaf, is the being ribs, fit, the ribs, the whatever ribs the case is, <laughs> whatever you like, <laughs> is going into the food chain? He mm -hmm. said, absolutely. And he did it in such a way as if he was frustrated. That's why he had all the candidates, um, uh, the senator at the time, um, Senator Obama, was down there, and of course, uh, 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 the current congresswoman, they've done nothing. So you can go down there and you can look at a situation yes. that is a cesspool. Yes. That is, is, for one thing, I know that at one point the school was closed. The element, they said they didn't have enough children, mm -hmm. so the school oh, was oh closed. Goodness. But you can... I remember when Oprah did a special. Yes. She went down and she showed the, the ultimate poverty-stricken community. Notwithstanding, there are a lot of people down there who are very self-sufficient, and I wish I were one of them because they are actually growing their own food and, and doing productive things. That side was never shown but that these people should be at risk, that, that this is not something that is just known in the local community, but that actual people with powerful connections went and yes. observed this and left it there? And have left it there. And I'm gonna tell you, the, 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 just add wow. to injury, to insult to injury, I was taken to where they had new home developments in Hopkins Park, it was just two city blocks and it was a cul-de-sac, and it was a warm summer day. When I went there, there were children playing in sprinklers. Unbeknownst to these children, they were dancing in poison water. Mm. That's what really, I almost wanted to get out the car and rush and tell them, rinse yourself off, well, rinse yourself off with what? Rinse yourself off with the same poison water because it's only things coming out of this spigot. It, it is so dire. Mm. I can't stress to you, when I saw it, it hurt my heart. We wanted a, a debate down there. And of course, the, you know, you have to have participants, so we're gonna end mm -hmm. up doing an empty chair because mm -hmm. the current congresswoman wasn't gonna participate. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is something people need to know. I'm not trying to knock someone, but if you're not gonna do the job, you don't need the job. And to have people, because I am a write-in, they will feel that there is no one else on that ballot. No, you're gonna put my name on that ballot because you want an option. You want an alternative. There are many people that know about this circumstance, but because of the color of one's skin, they have felt that we are um, 
expendable. Expendable, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And it cannot be tolerated any longer. Mm -hmm. That's what you'll get from Congressman-elect Marcus Lewis because I will not stop. I have children of my own. And God could, would not let me sleep. And I don't care who comes to me and say, look, you stay quiet on that. It doesn't matter because they were going to put down a prison down there and they were having pipes. Hopkins Park does not have a police, fire, medical of any kind. It takes 30 minutes from moments to, for oh an ambulance goodness. to reach you mm -hmm. if you had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. Even if they got there in time, you wouldn't make it back in time, mm -hmm. even if you were medevaced. This is how these black people have been forced to live and exist under these barbaric, you're talking about ISIS. They need to be talking about Hopkins Park, right here in Illinois, and there are those in the know that know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you're voting from them continuously because they're smiling in your face and stabbing you in your back. Well, if Lord. you want to do something different, Dr. Starks, mm -hmm. you have to do something different. Well, listen, I, I just want to want to give my sister a chance <laughs> to talk, but I just want to <laughs> make one point, and that is Hopkins Park and Pembroke is one of the oldest black communities yes. in this country. Black people came from the South and planted there, and they are farmers. I mean, they're very productive people. The state government has failed them, the federal government has failed them, and Mr. Lewis is the first congressional candidate that I've ever heard talk specifically about the dire situation in Hopkins Park and I, Pembroke. I, I'm going to throw the ball back over here in a minute, but we were talking about Tips. how our communities, no, we, no, we had conversation, <laughs> and we were talking about how so many of the environmental issues yeah. actually are exacerbated in our communities. We mm -hmm. have the most incinerators, we have the most pollution, mm -hmm. we have the most things that affect the health mm -hmm and well-being of our people, and you were talking about the asthma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what was your remark about that? Yeah, we were looking at a map, and you know, we looked on one map, one showed the incidence or the prevalence of asthma amongst children and in the general population, and then another map shared um, the incidence of you know, dumping, and those areas, and when I say dumping, I'm talking about chemical dumping. Mm -hmm. So the areas that had the highest concentrations of chemical dumping were on the southeast side, you know, where, you know, black folks. Paint factories yeah. and all that. Yeah, and then you on the west side. Chemical. You have a pet coke problem on the southeast side right there by the mm -hmm. lake yeah. mm -hmm. where the pet coke is being uh, stockpiled right. in the Latino area. Mm -hmm. And uh, southeast mm -hmm. uh, environment is, is working with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the mayor had, uh, Mayor Emanuel said he was going to do something about that, but the issue of it is that, that that needs to be stopped today. That needs to be stopped mm -hmm. now. Because Explain Petco, what Petco is. Well, Petco is a derivative from some type of mineral, and I'm not yeah, very, yeah. And, uh, and very, very versed with it, but I know it's mm -hmm. poison, mm -hmm. it's poison. abject poison. Mm -hmm. And of course, it affects the groundwater, and it affects mm -hmm. the lake water, mm -hmm. and it must be stopped. It must mm -hmm. be cleaned up. That needs to be cleaned up. Yesterday. So they've got high incidences of oh, cancer absolutely. and yes, black lung. Absolutely. And so you have okay. toxic substances mm -hmm. being spewed into communities of majority black, mm -hmm. or in the case of Pembroke Hopkins Park, right. I would venture to say that that's an entirely black community. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. So mm -hmm. you have, you know, you have this situation that it has to be known by the people who sign the permits and allow mm -hmm. these people to mm -hmm. dump yes. and to build Absolutely. incinerators and to <coughs> contaminate communities, they have to know sure before know. it happens. Yeah. With no regard to And life. so we think, what do we think when our children have high incidences of everything? You know, we, we say, you know, when they catch cold, we catch pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Why do we have these epidemics that are not traced to the pollution, environmental factors, not that you smoked yourself when you, you know, right. when you were a kid, not necessarily something that you personally mm -hmm. are doing, but because if you were not smoking, drinking, doing anything 
to your mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. you would still be subject to the toxic substances because mm -hmm. they are in the air you right. breathe, mm -hmm. the water you drink, mm -hmm. the soil on mm -hmm. which the food you're consuming is growing. Right. If we don't get serious about survival, we can forget about right. mm -hmm. elections mm -hmm. and politics. <laughs> Absolutely. If mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. go hand in hand, if we're not talking about how are we gonna be here on the planet? Mm -hmm. That's the question. How are we going to survive? Mm -hmm. And after we figure that one out, or simultaneously, <laughs> how are we going to develop? We need to survive, mm -hmm. but not at the level of cockroaches. We need right, to survive, right. and we need to grow, and mm -hmm. we need to come become better. And if we, that cannot happen if business as usual, if this has been going on for as many years mm -hmm. as you're, you're pointing out, and when you point out that's the oldest or one, one of, of the, the oldest, oldest yes. black, black community in the state. Mm -hmm. It's amazing mm -hmm. that yes. they are still living, walking, it. and mm -hmm. breathing yeah. people yeah. in yeah. that community. Well, you know, they were going to put a prison down there. That yeah, was one of the and the community down. fought it. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. It, it got turned away. Right. But they're also, they're also not only living in environmental hazard, they don't even have the, the uh, modernization of having gas line. Everything's mm -hmm. propane. Oh, my goodness. Right. Everything is propane in Pembroke Hopkins Park. Mm -hmm. So you have a gas, um, uh, uh, Melissa's daycare has a uh, uh, gas line, I mean not gas line, they have a propane tank that will last them maybe a month, two months, things like that. But when mm -hmm. it's out, children are cold. And it's dangerous. And it's dangerous. But they Very take dangerous. pride in being off the grid. Mm -hmm. See, they do <laughs> not want to be dependent upon all these different corporations supplying them with utilities. Mm -hmm. So they take great pride in being off the grid. So having propane means that you just get a supply of propane, you don't get a bill mm -hmm. that sure. comes that you have to, the economy, the m money from Hopkins Park and Pembroke goes out of their community. Absolutely. The money that's Absolutely. collected in their I think their zip code may not even belong to them. Mm -hmm. wow. But the monies, monies that should go to them mm -hmm. go out into Precisely. Kankakee. And if you Precisely. go to a meeting of their municipal, if you can call it that, government governing body, when you walk into the room, you will see a room full of white people. Yes. With a few black people who are, you know, the... <laughs> caretakers mm -hmm. of the community, of the you know, who mm -hmm. turn out the lights at night mm -hmm. and turn on the lights in the morning. And you say, where, all, where do these people come from? You know, they mm -hmm. come from Kankakee, they come mm -hmm. from St. Anne's, mm -hmm. yes. they mm -hmm. come from all around. Wow. And they determine what decisions are being made right. Right. about what mm -hmm. the, what the mm -hmm. life, life of the people uh, with the lifestyle it's a and the life almost of almost 50 years, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this has been going on mm -hmm. under the watchful or the turn your other, turn, <laughs> <laughs> look the other way, mm -hmm. I, of representative government. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, how can this, how can this be allowed? Mm -hmm. Enough is enough and too much is a plenty. Well, getting back to, to Lawndale, I, I'm just appalled at the, this lack of attention to tax money going into TIFF and nobody's responding because I've watched her <laughs> preach the gospel of TIFF and all of its shortcomings for years and nobody's paying her any attention. Well nobody so asks <laughs> about TIFFs because pe the community doesn't know this. Listen, they don't Richard ask Daly about took the money came TIFF in and where TIFF money did it go? and built downtown. Why do you think downtown Chicago is looking so beautiful now? This man took TIF money that was directed for poor communities and invested it in the loop. TIF money under Richard Daly was given to the Pritzker family to build a Hyatt Hotel in Hyde Park on 53rd and, and, and uh, uh, Lake Park. Harbor. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, can you, that's mm -hmm. the most insane thing in the world. They give rich people money and the University of Chicago <laughs> money to build something when poor people right around them are, you know, having foreclosures, school closings, you name it. Mm -hmm. It's called they don't care. Now it's our turn. That's what an election is about. And we have people in city council 
when when Valerie goes and talks to the, her her alderman, they look at her like she's crazy. Am I right? <laughs> you're absolutely right. Well, you have to deal with who you're dealing with. <laughs> well, you need to talk about what happens when you go in the first place. Okay. Explain to me how you got involved in this. Now I have to think <laughs> about this. You know, you live in North Lawndale. Mm -hmm. What made you notice that something didn't add up? Well. Well, they happened to put the last tiff in my backyard. You, mm -hmm. you know, they had tiffs everywhere else, but this last tiff, I just happened to live in it. And we went to a public meeting. Um, it was supposed to be a public meeting. And um, this was the day, I guess they had a meeting after um, the election. Michael Chandler lost the election, and then Sharon Dixon took over, and she wasn't up to speed on the tiff, so they canceled the meeting. And that really gave, that was a blessing in disguise because it gave the community more time to figure out what the heck was going on. So we started looking at the redevelopment plan that they had. And the more we learned about TIFFs, the more questions we had. You know, for example, the way this TIFF was laid out. Oh, so in answer to your question, because I, I lived in a TIFF. But the way this TIFF was laid out, they um, said that they wanted to build um, the equivalent of one jewel and Osco store in terms of commercial space. They also wanted to build 300 units of affordable and uh, affordable housing and market rate housing. But in order to do that, they wanted to take over or acquire 1,600 vacant parcels of land in mm -hmm. North Lawndale. Mm -hmm. So I may have gone to Chicago Public Schools, but I know that it doesn't take 1,600 vacant lots to, to build, build the equivalent, a, equivalent of a Jewel and Osco. And 300 units of housing. So they were using public money and actually poor people's money. Right. Let, let's be clear because um, <coughs> North Lawndale, you know, more than half the people are living below poverty. Right. So you've got right. low income, property owners, many of whom were elderly, who were going to be financing their own displacement. That's what it boiled down to. So they were going to um, take over 1,600 units of um, abandoned property. And then they also had a list of properties that could be potentially um, displaced as a result of the, how, of the TIF being implemented. And we were looking at over 1,200 people being displaced by the TIF potentially in addition to the fact that you had over 600 um, houses that were in building court already for building code violations. So if that TIF were to be implemented as planned, we would have really seen some serious displacement, especially along um, Kedzie from Cermak up to Ogden, and then on Cermak between Hamlin and Kedzie, and then this coincided very strangely with the fact that we were trying to get the Olympics. And when we started asking questions about the Olympics, you know, they wanted to have an Olympic venue Douglas in Douglas Park. Park. <laughs> so we started connecting all these dots, and people said, Valerie, you're paranoid. I'm like, I may be paranoid, but that doesn't mean nobody's following me, you know? And the more, the more we learned, the quieter people got. And then, on top of that, we look at um, Collins High School. Six, well, five, four years before that, they had pumped $30 million of TIF money into Collins High School to actually um, refurbish the whole school. But they didn't use all of the money all at once. They were kind of phasing everything in. Come to find out, they wanted to tear down the gym for Collins High School. They hadn't spent all of this money but they were going to tear down the gym to make room for an Olympic velodrome. So effectively, we were going to be using money that should have been going to Collins High School, you know, to finance this Olympic velodrome. And then, you know, the community got wind of that, and, you know, we raised arms, and then, you know, they uh, reconsidered that plan. You know, they weren't going to knock down the school. They were just going to build a velodrome next to it. So I believe that had we got the Olympics, North Lawndale would look a whole lot different, you know, from the way it looks now. You know, I can connect to that right now. I remember the old contract buyers league, mm. very yes, prevalent yes, yes. in yeah. in, La in, Nor in Lawndale, yeah. where Lawndale, people right. bought their houses on contract because mm -hmm. they couldn't get mortgage Mortgages. loans, mm -hmm. and then the 
the, they realized that they were being gouged interest-wise and everything else, and they formed this Contracts Buyers League, and they started mm -hmm. putting their mortgages in escrow and escrow mm and -hmm. what have you. And a lot of those homeowners lost their properties yes. in in that in the process of of work, working this thing out. So that the property was not this land was not abandoned. These people were driven mm -hmm. out right. because in the first place they were not allowed to purchase properties mm -hmm. the way other people purchase property, right. and then they couldn't keep the property because they were gouged with interest rates. Mm -hmm. They were also visited with building code mm -hmm. violations because mm -hmm. they got a whole lot of inspections. Insurance companies redlined them yep. and wouldn't mm -hmm. give them insurance at reasonable rates. So you're driving people out of a community mm -hmm. so that you can now redefine mm -hmm. that community and oh boy yeah the same people who uh, were redlining in the 60s are now investing community <laughs> empowerment by any means and where please, is the representation please keep, <laughs> yes. please keep in mind that the um, uh, so called lower west side is creeping further and mm -hmm. further west because every time you pick up the paper there's a new development around the stadium and then mm. you see new housing. So eventually, they're going to take over the land there. Right. So Lower Lawndale meaning Shut Pilsen, right? right? Pilsen and Little Village. Right. Yeah, that's true. Right. right. So okay, it's, it's so called, it's if we can't stay here, we can't stay where we are <laughs> here. You yeah. know, thank you for providing us an option because obviously we have about one minute you may make closing statements. <laughs> All I will say is thank you very much for the opportunity. I want to let people know that the uh, editor from the Kankakee City News called me the long shot. That is the best shot. And he, ir he outlined the very things that we're talking about here. Good. That you can Good. get through an independent candidate. You will not get through an established candidate that is basically bought and paid for. And so if you want to start anew, if you want to do something different, mm -hmm. vote Marcus Lewis in November 4th, 2014. Well, all right. Well, we've done it, brothers and sisters. We have, we have tried to provide some level of voter education because mm -hmm. I've learned things here. You know, like I said, I, that last dot I connected <laughs> because my father-in-law had one of those houses under the Contract yeah. Buyers League. I know okay. about that struggle. I know mm -hmm. there was a similar struggle on the south side. Mm -hmm. And when you connected the dots of putting 53rd and Cornell all the way out to Pembroke, mm -hmm. see, we don't, we don't see <laughs> ourselves. We think those people live out there in the rural, mm -hmm. and these people are living in Hyde Park somewhere. No, mm -hmm. we all one people. Yes, we are. Wherever mm -hmm. we are, we all one people. We got the same struggle. Mm -hmm. We have the same issues, mm -hmm. and we have the same need for representation. Yes. Quality. So representation. I, I, I so much appreciate you, <laughs> Professor Robert T. Starks. Thank you very much. The I'm retired glad. We professor appreciate <laughs> you. And Valerie Leonard, who was so patient with these men who have so much to say. And, <laughs> and Congressman-elect Claim Absolutely. it. Claim it. I do. Claim it. And I thank you so much thank for being you. my guest. Thank you. And I don't me. know if they, they were flashing numbers up there. I don't know if they're trying to tell us the goal. But if somebody what wants to you, light you. into saying something, we can talk to we hear music. <laughs> well, I just want to say again that people understand that the end of politics is power. It's not just this idea that you big man sitting in the seat and <laughs> driving a big car. That's, That's not power. The power <laughs> is different name and this has served to just confuse us when all is said and done to be one's our revolution we never stand alone cause unity's our resolution oh, I, I, oh, oh. the motive is done